Hey, what's up everybody? It's Brian here with another tutorial. This time we're going to jump right back into After Effects and I'm going to show you guys some tricks that I use to create some depth in just simple 2D comps. So let's get started. Okay, here we are. We're in After Effects right now. I'm going to create a new composition. Uh, let's do 1920 by 1080. And as always, uh, I try to do 24 frames a second. In this case, 23.97. 10 seconds is fine. Let's just call this depth tutorial now in the past i did a depth tutorial but that was primarily on 3d depth 3d cameras this tutorial is going to focus on doing depth in 2d and how we could create depth in our compositions inspired by some of my colleagues who've been doing a lot of logo work as always this is going to be pretty heavy on motion design but keep in mind i'm a vfx artist so i like to apply vfx principles into my motion design work to get started i'm going to create a new text layer i'm just going to name this text in this case i'm going to do the align tool let's align it over the center of the composition Text actually is a little bit small that I think about it. Let's grow that and then realign that. Perfect. I want to use my favorite trick in the book, and that's creating a breakage in your background. And that's going to be done by using a solid, call this beam, and we're going to use a gradient. Yeah. Let's drag that to the bottom. Now you can use a gradient like this, and you could probably use this to your heart's content to create a little bit of depth. But this trick right here is really designed to build around a light source that comes from way back off in the distance and it's an illusion really and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to switch this to radial uh, i'm going to swap colors let's move the start there and the end over here and let's just pick a random color i i always traditionally go towards blue and in this case i'm going to do the same so we'll use blue or a version of blue and i'm going to scatter this a little bit so we get nice soft fall off here and then I'm actually going to blend this in. We don't want it very bright. The idea is to create elements that are around our composition that are not distracting. So we have a nice little background going. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to create a new solid. And this is going to be our foreground. And we're pretty much going to bookend our entire composition this way. Now, in the foreground, we want to use haze to pull elements back. Before we could do that, though, I want to create another gradient. So all I'm going to do is come over here and just copy the gradient from before you can also duplicate the background layer and just in this case i just want to copy it and i want to move the center to let's say a little bit off screen on this side and then we're going to set this one to screen and this is just going to create some haze and i can even increase this a little bit we can even change the color just slightly and now we have this nice little haze as if we have a key light over here and keep in mind, we're going to stay 2D this entire time. There are no 3D elements I'm going to throw on this composition. So it should render very fast. Now let's start throwing in elements to really, really set this up. I'm not going to throw in unique pictures or images. I'm just going to create shapes. I'm going to throw them in 3D space and see what we get. So to get started, I'm going to create a new shape layer. On this shape layer, I'm going to create an ellipse. And then we're going to fill this ellipse. Don't worry about the color just yet. Let's throw this one in the background. So I'm going to throw this behind the text. Let's increase the size a little bit. Let's move the position over here. And we'll just stay with red for this time. Uh, but what I want to do is I'm going to add a hue sat effect on this one just to lower the saturation a little bit, darken it up, keeping it simple. And then I want to add a camera lens blur. This is going to be the crux for the uh, blurring of the depth. Now you can use fast box blur for even faster results, but we have the camera lens blur in After Effects. It's a great tool to use. So uh, let's start with the 25% blur. Oh, that's a little high. I say 50. No, that's, that's still too high. I actually want to increase the size even more. And now it looks like we have an object behind our text. Making sure we stay consistent with our values. I'm actually going to pull this even back. And there we go. I'm going to duplicate that shape layer now. And I'm going to go to the shape. I'm going to actually, the shape, I'm actually going to increase the size of this one. And let's move this position way over here. On the hue sat, we're going to add a little bit more saturation back, more lightness. And I'm going to really pump up the blur. Now, this one is going to be in front of the text size a lot here. Now the light's probably going over this. So now that I think about it, I actually want to darken this. And now we have an element here. 
And you could just keep adding shape layers to your heart's content. But this is a tutorial. I'm not going to sit here and spend too much time and not waste your time doing effects that are irrelevant. You guys should get the idea by now. The next tip I want to share is going back to what I talked about earlier, and that's adding some haze. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. Uh, for me, what I like to do is I like to come in here and on my libraries, I have these dynamic assets. One of them here, I have particle. Now, these are 720 particles. I'm going to import all of them right now. So whatever I do, I'm going to have to scale them up. But what's cool about these ones is if I scale this up, actually before I scale up, I can show you. Um, this is not 100% black, right? If I come over here to my info, if you watch these, there are values here. They're not 0% white or 100% black, which means if I set these to screen, they're going to push values up across the board. So let's go and increase this in size to 150. And let's set it to screen and let's see what happens. See the difference? Now we've added this dimensional haze and you can find particles like this on Envato Elements or other resource websites, or you can go shoot your own too if you have access to a DSLR or a camera. Uh, I'm gonna link a link in the description to Envato Elements though, because I highly recommend them. You can find assets like this there and so much more. And now, we have this 3D effect. And you've seen me use this effect on some of my tutorials in the past, like the Illustrator Object 3D tutorial, that depth tutorial itself. I love using particles. I think it just adds so much. Is it a little bit overused? Absolutely. I think it's an overused effect. But if you need to create some 3D in a pinch, particles is the way to go. Of course, this might be a little bit too crazy. So all we have to do is come in here and pull back on the opacity. And you still have the same effect because of that haze because it's still pushing values. I'm going to bring some of that back. The last thing I want to show you guys, let's pull this below the foreground. The last thing I want to show you guys here is vignetting. So that this is simple. I'm going to create one last solid and we're going to call it vignette. I'm going to come over here to my masking tool, which is Q, but and I'm going to go down to the ellipse tool. And then if you come up here with that layer highlighted and you double click with the ellipse tool optioned, It'll create an ellipse that's to your comp size. On this mask, let's go ahead and invert it uh, by clicking to subtract or hitting invert. Either one works. And let's just pump that feather. And then you can use the expansion here to make the decision how much vignetting you want. And then we just lower the opacity. Like so. And now you have a little bit of lens vignetting and it's just really starting to look like something out of a lens. And that's what we're shooting for when we go for realism. One more thing that you can do is to push this way over the edge. And this is a bonus tip. What you can do is take all of these and I'm going to pre-comp and then I'm going to duplicate this. And what I want to do is I want to keep this bottom one. I'm going to go to tint. On this bottom one, I want to tint all the white values here to a 100% red and 100% blue, but I wanna take all of the green out like that. Let's duplicate that. And this time I wanna put 100% green and no red and no blue. And I'm gonna set this to screen. And we're back to kind of where we started. It's just white now. Um, but what we can do with this effect is if I come over here and let's say I go to the scale and I go to 101, you'll now start to see some chromatic aberration. 101 is pretty extreme. And there you go. You have this little bit of red displaced. Now, I actually did this in reverse. Um, no big deal. Let's just go over here. Set this to screen and normal. Um, and then this one, actually, we can scale to one. There we go. Now we have our red displaced. Some people call it red shift. Uh, other people just call it chromatic aberration. I love using chromatic aberration. Um, it's just... It's just a great way to add that extra sense of depth than realistic quality that you may not see if we really want this to look like it's coming through a lens. Switch that to screen. And then because we did go much higher in our values, all we have to do, and you remember how I at the very beginning said, let's work in the darker values. All we have to do now is come over here to our particles. Let's lower this to like, let's say 66%. And let's do an adjustment on top. And I'm just gonna use a curves. I'm going to increase some contrast here. Then if we come back here, you'll see that we're starting to get it back. Um, you can even do this adjustment here on this one. So we go to here, adjustment layer. Curves on our main, on our main level. 
There we go. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts on this. This is a very bookend uh, tutorial, something you would do at the very end of your compositions to just make your compositions pop. Um, this isn't the only way to do this. Of course, it's probably better to go into 3D camera, but sometimes that's just not a realistic approach. We have to render something really quickly. And this tutorial here is less than 10 minutes. So let me know what you guys think. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. Also, be sure to check out my first Houdini tutorial. I'm linking that in the description below as well as in the card that's showing up right here in the corner. Please be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon so you know when new videos go live, and I'll see you in the next video.